first thing we're going to talk about is students. Students that are registered with me, they should be, uh, if you bought your packages or your nukes and are qualified, get with E and get on the Don's Keepers. Uh, and then if you're going to resell bees, be sure to get your order in and then post where you're going to be. Just like if you have any trouble doing it, actually contact Greg. He's doing a good job running a route. It's going to take you a little bit of time. But if you're marking packages up 50, 60 bucks uh, or even more, I mean, there's people selling them for more. Uh, you can tell the customer you can have them shipped. And the last time we shipped packages, it was running 18 to 24 or $25 per package. And if they're going to pay you a little bit more, $50 a package, there's going to be very few dead bees in the bottom. The bees are going to be in better condition. So those are the things you can tell your, your uh, customers. And then as soon as you can, I see now some of these people are listening. We put your behind you back there, put your web page up and your contact information. Don't sit there and be uh, a dunce with the dunce cap on. You're in business. Uh, and then uh, we're posting when we're going to have our student classes. That's going to be in March. If you're taking grafting classes, be sure you get a hold of me and get me a date. We're going to hold up grafting classes to two, maybe three students. You're going to have hands on. You're going to graft when you leave here. And <clears throat> if you uh, if you come in, you want to do building classes. I suggest doing them in January and. February until it starts getting where we're doing our grafting. Uh, and then the classes are all going to be one-on-one. -on -one. We don't do 20, 30 people in our classes. So any of the students, if you have, uh, if you are going to be a student or you want to take classes, get on Don's Keepers on my webpage, contact students that are around you that took the class because if I'm talking to you, it's a selling pitch I'm giving you. A student's going to tell you, no, nah, this guy don't know crap, or he's going to teach you something. I, I'd rather have a student tell you how it is here. But my main goal is not giving out certificates. I want you to make a living at what you're doing here. If we do our splitting classes when the weather is right, and if people want to talk to me uh, on these chats, People are bashful. They don't want to say something, and maybe people think, well, that's a dumb question. I do one-on-one -on -one consultation on Zoom. That way you've got my attention for a half an hour. It's 50 bucks. If you're a cheapskate, that here's only five, 10 bucks a month. Uh, <clears throat> and we have clubs that we talk to. If you're going to do clubs, set your price. My my price for clubs is three fifty and up, and then depends on how far I go. And then also, I try to help you on a one to one set up a business plan of how you can make your money back. There's a lot of people out there that not give you that type of advice. And then uh, always uh, mention your your affiliation with Fat B Man. It's going to get your foot in the door. And you can probably get a little bit more discounts on a lot of products. Uh, let me see. I think I covered it all except the roots. Try to get your roots kind of laid out. If you have to make two roots, you should make enough to pay for your bees on each trip. And then see right now, I can see everybody's got their web page up. This is better than buying those business cards. Now, I know I hit on a lot of little things uh, tonight, so who's going to start with the questions? Got a lot of questions lined up already. We're Good, gonna that's with, what I want to hear. I'm going to start with Jennifer first. Go ahead, Jennifer. Unmute, and then you can go. Unmute. Hi. Hey. Hi, John. Hi. <laughs> I just want to... Hey, I just want to thank you for contacting me. And I uh, just want to ask you about Raising Queen. Hey, I just want to talk to you and say thanks for all your teaching about, you know, making the wax foundation. I think that's a great thing. Thank you. Trying to educate everybody. Yeah, yeah. And, and, 
Well, and I think it's great that you make it the wax out of the, you know, the wax that you get from your bees. Right. So that they, they know it came from that area. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And then if you are students or your people on here, you should advertise that you have wax and how you process your wax. There's people out there will buy that wax if you have extra wax to sell. Don't be afraid to charge. My bottom oh, price no. is $15 up. No, I understand that. And uh, I do share with our local bee clubs. And uh, and I talk to them about how to render their wax, too, just like you do with your, your folks there up in uh, Oklahoma. I think that's great that uh, you're teaching them, too, right. how to save their wax and make it into new foundation. Mm -hmm. Good. So I just kind of wanted to say thank you for that. And, you know, that w it wasn't really a question. It was just kind of a, a thank you for, for doing that. Well, thank you for joining us. If you got me keeping experience and stuff, you know, that's what we're here for with the share because there are probably people in your area that's going to be a little different beekeeping than where I am. So if you got pointers, please share. Oh, well, thanks for that. And uh, down here in Houston, you know, it's already getting warm. We've had temperatures in the 70s today and things are already blooming. So we're having an early swarm season, kind of pre-swarm, as you say. Yeah. But uh, those are hives that probably had problems with mites or something like that. And they're already leaving and looking for somewhere else to live. But uh I do practice treatment-free beekeeping, and uh, I'm happy to say we have lots of black bees here in Houston that are kind of the original German bees. Right. Yeah, and, they, you know, I uh, talked to a fellow at our bee club a long time ago. He raised the Midnight and Starline bees. Right. I forget his name, but... I uh, buy those from York uh, back in the early 60s, late 50s. Yeah, yeah, that's what you talked about. <laughs> I'm and one of came, those old timers. <laughs> yeah, and he came to our club and he was talking about him. I raised my hand. I said, hey, I find those black bees a lot of times in my relocation hives, especially in the city. And I said, maybe lots of hobby beekeepers kept those bees and then they moved into houses. And then uh, when I'm lucky enough to get those bee removals, I save those bees for sure. Yeah. because they're real special to me. Okay, anything else, Jennifer? No, that's it. Just want to say uh, hi, and I'm glad that I'm joining the chat right now. Right. I'm happy to listen to whatever other people have to ask. Okay, over to Melissa. Go ahead, Melissa. Hey, everybody. Hey, Don. Just wanted to say I'm planning the route to deliver your packages. Um, late March or early April, weather dependent. Going to be stopping in Atlanta, Chattanooga, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Bowling Green, Louisville, Indianapolis, and Roselawn. I'll be delivering Don's packages in Queens, and I also teach classes, common sense beekeeping, Don's methods, individual or group classes. Um, in, Check that all out on my website, gsbeez.com. Thank you. And over to Nancy. Go ahead, Nancy. Hi. Oh, Melissa, I like your sign. That looks really cool. Did you guys hear me? Yep. 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 Oh, OK. <laughs> um, yeah, I forgot I was going to ask you, Don. Um, but um, let's see. I forgot what I was going to ask. We come back to you. Nervous, yeah, so I... yeah, come back to me. All right, put your hand up when you when you figure it out. Okay. All right, over to Linda. Go ahead, Linda. Okay, I wanted. I got into my bees yesterday because it was like right at fifty degrees here here and I wanted to check them to see how they were doing. We've had really mild weather and I've been worried about them having enough to eat all winter. Mm -hmm. Most of the hives were, were great, had plenty of stores. I had one that was that was light at the beginning of fall. So I've been watching it real close and I actually put in one of those mountaintop 
beaters with sugar on the top. And I got in there yesterday and there they had come up and ate some of the sugar. There was still sugar in it, but I could tell there was no activity. So I opened up the hive and they were all dead, thousands of them. Wow. And they had clustered on the two center frames, but I don't understand what happened because they there was still plenty of sugar in there, but they, they were just dead. Was they damp looking? No. They, they felt they, really, I touched some of them. They felt fresh. Like I, I expected them to be dried up or something, but mm -hmm. they felt like they had just died. That's strange. Uh, usually when people have a cluster like that, it's usually because there's moisture in the hive. Mm -hmm. uh, I just shot a video in the back of the house here and I showed all the doubles that we have and I never thought about it, but I'm gonna shoot uh, part two and we're running these doubles with absolutely no entrance reducers and vent holes. Oh, I, I did have an entrance reducer on this one. Well, see, that's why I'm gonna do this next video. Yeah. If, when you change the weather, or if you do something like feed them a little bit, sometimes it builds a little bit of moisture up in there. Mm -hmm. If the hive is fairly strong going into winter, like in November, we don't run Queenix or uh, entrance reducers until early you know when we do one frame splits with a cup of bees mm -hmm. but once they get up a little established we leave them go okay i mean that's that's why i want to do this next video sometimes showing someone what you're doing and mentioning the date because some people can pull up a video i've done and say well you've done this and there's no date on it i might have done it 10 or 20 years ago so I'm going to start putting the dates or mention the dates when I shoot these things so you have a reference point. Yeah. If you have your entrance reduced down too tight, I'd suggest right now is to open it up so we have at least three or four inches in that opening okay. in the front. Okay. And if it's a good strong hive, we're running 10 frame doubles in the back here. For These are for hives that are for shaking bees. We don't run an entrance reducer at all. Okay. The only time we're running reduced entrances is like on our one and two frame splits early. But see, all of our, our doubles that we got, we got another yard that we're using going to make a bunch of splits. And I'm doing one frame splits with queen cells that are ready to hatch. So you got a double deep that's that's uh, 20 frames. We're going to make 18 splits out of it. Uh huh. So my others even though they look good and, and, and do stores, you think I should take the entrance reducers out of them? I would at least open them up a little bit more. Uh, okay. Are you running an inner cover? The, uh, just screen. Well, uh, what about your lid? What's your lid? Is it got it's, metal on it? It's a telescoped with metal, yes. When you lift it up, I would look underneath for maybe beads or dampness that you might see uh, signs of dampness. Because okay. usually that's where you're going to notice your dampness set in your hive. Well, I noticed the ones that um, that still have the sugar on, they haven't come into the sugar at all. It, that sugar is completely hardened up, absorbing all that moisture. Right. Yeah. And I actually broke some holes in some of it yesterday just to give it some breathing room. I hope Do that was okay. Do you have vent holes on any of your boxes? Yes, all of them. Good, good. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Good. This is a learning curve. That's why we're discussing it here. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Right over to Brent. Go ahead, Brent. You got to unmute. How's that? There you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have, I need some advice. I'm on the verge of making a really big move. Uh, I'm going to take this uh, international. Um, leaving home here in Indiana, and I'm planning on moving to Southeast Asia um, within this year, probably uh, close to the summertime. Okay. Now, my, my issue is that I'm, I'm making all my equipment now uh, while I have access to wood, and I'm trying to ship it. Um, and it leads me, and I've already made 1,200 frames from scratch, uh, and now I'm starting on my boxes. And this is uh, this is where, this is where I need your help. Um, I watch a lot of videos and a lot of, I've watched all of yours and I've seen you make honey, uh, running supers on top of five frame nukes. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I like that idea. And I'm going to have access to uh, very reasonable labor. Uh, and I'm going to be able to produce honey 12 months out of the year. Um, because there's always something in bloom. It, I've got a, I've got a constant, uh, um, you know, source of, you know, rain, water, everything's blooming all year. So Where are you, what um, place are you moving to? I'm, I'm moving Southeast Asia into the Philippines. Okay. Cause so, I have students from different places and I have one, it sounded like you was going to be co close to him. He's in South Africa. And he oh, has 365 days of like Hawaii weather. Yeah. And there is absolute nobody there that makes queens. And if there is queens, they are uh, superseded queens from Africanized genetics. So right. and people don't even know how to make splits over there. So I would say uh, watch for him. He's, he's on my web page, not my web page, my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Contact him because if you're going to ship, that's what he does. Where he's coming from. There's no wood. So he has to buy a truckload of wood from Turkey, buy his equipment, yeah. his machinery, and have it shipped to where he's going. And I I can get, I have good access to uh, uh, plywood, but not a lot of like, uh, there, there's no pine. It, it, so I wanted to just get a jump on it since I've got a, I've got a good supply of frames right now. I want to ship myself enough material to get started. And... Uh, a lot, all these other big honey producers that I see videos for, they always run 10 frame. And I've heard you so many times talk about how that's not the most efficient way to do it. The bees want to build up faster in the five frames. They go up, they don't go out. And I've seen it work. And I've seen that happen in my own bees here. And um, since I'm going to have, um, you know, it's going to be my full-time job. I'll be, I'll be with the bees every day. Um, I just wanted to know, does that sound reasonable to manage an entire honey producing apiary on five frame boxes with supers on it? If you can be in them and you can pull the full cap frames as they're, as they're being finished, if you keep removing them and replacing them with, with empties. If you can keep on top of it, but what's the breaking point where you can work your hives? That's the thing. And, you know, you could probably do, if you have really strong honey flows in 10 frame stuff, but mm -hmm. you have to think about how long you can lift these big heavy boxes. I found the older you get, the narrower the box, it works a lot better. When yeah, I was a young man, 50, I worked it's nothing but deeps and I'm paying for it now. So, I mean, but you yeah, need to check on your cost and permits to get this stuff shipped over there. I, I don't have a, I don't have a problem. I'm not shipping pallet fulls. I'm shipping cardboard boxes uh, right now. And oh. it's not, it's not yet cost prohibitive to, yeah. because I want to have a jump on it. There's actually, there's a Man Lake distributor um, in the country and, but it's pricey uh, to get Man Lake material that's made in, I think, New Zealand and then shipped over there. Um, but, uh, I, so I figured if I could get, uh, a good number of boxes made unassembled shipped, and I can assemble them over there, um, I'd just be ahead of the game, but I just wanted to get your opinion on if it was feasible or logical to start with those five frames and, uh, anything possible that them. you can do that the problem is. If you're going to go into commercial beekeeping, you have to have somebody can help you because you're not going to pick up on all the things that can happen. Mm -hmm. It takes several years. And if you're going to where you're moving to there, you might not have any help there. First thing I would do, even though they have a Man Lake distributor there, is I'd contact them or the main office and set yourself up as either a dealer or to buy wholesale. And you'd okay. be surprised how much cheaper you can get stuff. Oh, that's a good idea. We buy a lot of stuff by the truckload, and we probably get it at least 40 to 60% cheaper than the average person. But the drawback is you have to invest a bunch of money and buy in quantity. Right. It's something to think about. And warehouse it. <laughs> well, either that or put it out in the, in the field to work for you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. 
over to hopefully Nancy knows what she's talking about now. Go ahead, Nancy. <laughs> Okay, yeah, um, we were having a problem. We went out to our bee yard and um, there's snow and everything out there yet, but um, a couple of our lids are warping. Now we use the ponderosa pine wood um, as two paints of, two coats of paint, but they're warping on the edge. And you put in, okay, what size staples did you put in? Inch and a half? He used an inch and a half staples, but is I don't it, understand. Uh, is or is it quarter crown staples? Quarter crown? I'm sorry, what? Quarter crown. Quarter crown. Yep, they'll back out on you and warp. And okay. To a 7 sixteenths, or they, they rate it as a half inch gun, inch and a half, cement coated staples, and they will stay in and it won't warp so bad. Did you hear that? Thank you. Okay, and then I had a question. Now, right. if um, the now if the um, salesman asks me what kind of bees we have, I, I can't just tell them that we have mutts. I mean, what's the what? What should I tell them? Well, what do I tell you when you call me? I have honeybees. Okay. I don't know who those honeybees mate with. We make hundreds and hundreds of them. Okay. If the bee is laying, what difference does it make? I mean, okay. if you get Russian bees, just set some vodka out once in a while. If you get a Italian, <laughs> set a pizza out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, over to Patricia. Go ahead, Pat. Unmute. <laughs> Unmute, Pat. The little box came up and I clicked it. I thought I did. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> this is for Nancy. As far as what kind of bees you have, it's a real good idea to do some background research and develop a little sales pitch and sort of practice on your husband or whatever. So that when people ask you those questions, you're not caught off guard. Um, when I started, I did a lot of varroa sensitive hygienics. And then I bought a couple of you know, really good lines, but then all my bees swarm to the woods. So my bees are mutts. They've made it with all the local bees because unless you've got a certified breeder queen, there's no way you can say you have only one particular bee in your bee yard because they, even though you have flooded your yard with your genetics, there's still wild bees everywhere. So just, you know, decide how you're going to describe them and come up with a sales pitch. Survivor, locally sourced, um, you know, produced right here in my home apiary, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Whatever is the key word that, you know, your local area is talking about, yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks, Pat. That's all. All right, over to Greg, go ahead, Greg. I think what Nancy is talking about there is if anyone's seen like, uh, well, we probably all have seen the current Man Lake emails where they're going to break down specifically what breed the bees are. What I've also kind of blows me away is if anyone is actually looking at those prices, the pickup prices on some of those bees right now are like 175 to 190. They're getting to be over $200 shipped for a three pound package of bees, which <laughs> I think it's great that if there's a market that supports that and i'm all for the capitalistic environment but it kind of blows me away how high the prices are getting but i think we've had a lot of trouble on the west coast earlier in the year with bees and things maybe that's maybe that's also um driving those those prices up but uh when we sell uh bees the packages that we get from don and actually shout out to both don and steven and the whole crew there at dixie bee supply because they are uh I'm not just saying it, I'm not getting paid to say this, but they're fantastic to work with. Uh, Steven, they're also very responsive, answer the questions. They want to see us all do well. Um, and uh, the first, you'll, you'll really appreciate how tight of a ship they run when you're getting a load of a few hundred bees uh, and they're doing a, such a nice job on getting them fastened to your trailer, making sure that they look good. 
and can set you down the road with good looking bees, you really, it's, uh, I just want to say thanks to them too. Um, but when we, but we, when we saw those bees, the folks, um, and when we get them home, I think what I like most about the bees is that they are mutts. You'll have some that are jet black. You'll have some that are black and yellow. You'll have some that are brown and yellow. And they're all, they're just, and I think that's, you know, being here on a farm or anyone who's worked with animals or dogs or any, there is, I think, something special about hybrid vigor. There is definitely certain uh, aspects that you might want in a purebred something, but uh, I think there's a lot of uh, excellent attributes for hybrid vigor when it does come to livestock. And uh, it, maybe some folks will get offended that I consider my bees livestock, but to me they are. So I think, um, Nancy, when you consider that aspect of it, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with calling them uh, Italian mutt bees. They do express a lot of Italian traits, but there's also a lot of Carniolian and Caucasian and all kinds of stuff mixed in there. And I think that's why I kind of enjoy those um so much speaking of those packages i think i see him on here tonight brian over there at castle hives I wanted to shout him out say thanks he's bought packages up here in ohio so looking forward to getting um some bees up to them so brian thanks for that and there's a lot of folks on here looking around the screen that i've gotten to know a little bit better uh through text messages and phone calls and emails and things and uh i just want to thank all you guys for not only supporting don but supporting us by buying bees and a lot, I've told a lot of you guys bucket plugs, um, and I really appreciate that too. And just wanted to say thanks. I really do appreciate all you guys were, you know, it, it sounds kind of corny, but you know, we really are kind of one big team uh, kind of working together. And what I re really appreciate the most about Don and his whole crew is they work really hard to um, help set us all up to be successful and help us meet those, those goals. So, uh, so thanks again, Don, I really appreciate you guys. That's one reason where I try to tell on these chats here, my students will bend over backwards to help you to be successful. Because there, there's so many sales out there, we don't have to worry about you're gonna take $1 out of each other's pocket. I mean, my work, I don't have diplomas for any of it, but my work is speaking for itself right now. Nationwide, county-wise, and even I'm getting students unadvertised from other parts of the world. I mean, we've had people here come from Japan, Australia, New Zealand, places that you 10 years ago, you couldn't convince me. I could teach them before, and I don't advertise. They word of mouth, people will tell you that they're doing a good job. This student's doing a good job. Each student, don't get disgusted. Put the time in. You'll have more business you can handle and then help one another. I mean, that's the point of this chat. I mean, if you are doing something that works in your area, I might not know how to do it. You know, it's gonna help me. I learn stuff all the time. And I've been doing this for a few years. Sometimes it's simple things that you pick up. I picked up several tricks from Jerry. I used to paint my waxing and darn brush would float the, the wax and I had to reach in the hot wax and pick it up. It was a stupid little nail I drove in the side of a paintbrush, kept it from floating. So I'm the first one to say it. Everything I've learned is trial and error. And I've learned as much from students coming here as they do from me. So don't be bashful. Just get in there, ask your question. I mean, we're helping each other here. This ain't a quiz show. We're not getting a $5,000 prize or something here. I thought we'd get a prize if we stumped the fat bee man, though. You get some free chats. That, I want to have that happen. I want to see it be recorded and happen. But it's got to be on bees. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, over to Pat again. Go ahead, Pat. Un unmute. <laughs> this little box pops up, and I click on that, but it's not really working, so I've got to remember to go up to the microphone. But one thing to remember is that you want to advertise that you have diversified genetics. That's going to be your healthy bees. They're going to be the strongest. They're going to be local. Um, and I have a friend who's going to buy a, um, let's say, Italian breeder queen. And then as soon as she gets her laying, she's going to sell queen cells. So you take those queen cells home and they mate with your drones. That's no longer that... Uh, artificially inseminated queen bees genetics. That's her genetics and the 12 or 15 drones she mated with. So instantly you're diversified. So unless you're only taking queens from an artificially inseminated 
queen and breeding them back in a box to those drones, you're instantly going to have diversified genetics. That's just the way it works because they breed in flight which is what you want. That's what makes them healthy. So just, you know, focus on locally sourced, diversified genetics. Just, you know, pick up the keywords that you can uh, explain to somebody if they say, well, what does diversified genetics mean? Well, every couple of years, we go down and get some queens from Don to make sure that we keep the genetic pool strong by bringing in new genetics. Even in our yard, you know, after a while, they're all breeding back with each other, even in flight and everything. So it's good to bring in new queens every few years to keep that diversity going. That's what gives you strong, healthy survivor bees. And that's what you're after. That's all. Okay. Uh, okay. Over if you want to talk about breeder stock now, uh, I buy some what they consider breeder, artificial inseminated breeder. I buy a couple or two or three about every two or three years. But the only drawback on that, and, and most breeders are not going to tell you, nobody that's doing artificial insemination will guarantee that queen will not fly out and remate. So that's something you need to consider. So, you know, a lot of people, they think, well, if I buy this here, I'm going to have purebred. You won't. You'll have it for a short period of time. And those queens don't seem to last as long as, as the ones that's uh, naturally mated. That's my opinion. It's not scientific. Okay. All right, over to David and Tracy. Go ahead, guys. Hi. Hey. Good evening, everybody. Just wanted to reach out and say hi and thanks for everything. Um, one thing we've been doing, we just did was we went out and replaced all of our in um, hive feeders with the bucket feeders. So. Thanks, learned that from here on um, Fat Bee Man Chat and um, got our plugs from Greg, I guess, for the, for the um, buckets. buckets. And so those are working out good, look really nice out there on, on, the, um, on the hives. And um, just a little update, we're, um, we're David and Tracy, we're from Heppa White Farms and we're selling, um, uh, we've got our sign there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're selling nukes this year and, and actually um, branching out and doing some queens. And, and then um, uh, also started um, beekeeping classes. So we're, we found that that's a lot of the people that are buying from us, they're new and so they need a little bit more um, instruction. So we're gonna give them the opportunity to um, come out and get a little bit, um, some basic information about bees and then do a live um, uh, hive um, uh, observation as we go through the hive. So, mm -hmm. and do that. And You're so what, fine. what's that? You're progressing fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, we, we feel uh, confident, Don, about doing some basic classes because we learned from the best. And uh, yeah. we did that last year. Oh, and yeah. and that we, I just encourage, you know, people here on that will hear this chat, uh, go take one of Don's classes. Yes. Um, it, it's, it's just a game changer. And you will you will get things and take a lot of things back that you can immediately apply. You can apply them there while you're working with Don, and it's well worth doing. So go take the time and sign up because it changed our business a whole lot. Changed the philosophy and just the way we we work with the bees out there. So much nicer having, like we said, the genetics <clears throat> from your and that's what we say that we call them Georgia genetics, but Texas raised because they're they're down here and, and the more that and we're going to come down and get more queens to be able to um, restock some of our queens this uh, hives requeen some of our hives this year and just be able to bring some more of that genetics down in the area um, because we do fight with the sometimes the aggressive uh, feral bees getting in too so. There's a Thank case you. there where, you know, that, you know, I, we probably talked about it when you was there. You might have asked me, you know, about marking queens and that. Mm -hmm. That In that area, maybe that might be a good idea is to mark your queens. That way, if the queen uh, is not there, then you might want to, you know, watch that genetics. It's okay. something to maybe think about. Yeah, good point. But, you know, personally... You know, I probably explain to a lot of students, I don't like to mark queens. I don't clip, I clip queens. So, and I have my reasons for that there. And I always explain it. But if you take that minute and explain to your customers about the different reasons why you're doing something, it helps your business tremendously. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. 
Thank you. Thanks. Okay. All right, over to Todd. Go ahead, Todd. Uh, hey, Don, I have a quick question. It's kind of two are unrelated. Uh, first of all, we're uh, talking about Queens. When are you going to have um, drones available to purchase? Uh, we we'll probably won't have until April to the middle of April. Okay. Okay. We're setting up about 4,000 boxes right now for shipping and packaging. So we're going to go through a bunch of drones. They, they're going to be committing suicide in the air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, the other questions on the bucket feeders. Um, uh -huh. How long do you think that plastic's going to last out in the sun, that white plastic? Because where my bees are at now, I'm on a farm. I pick up a, a five gallon bucket and the ridges on the sides just crumble because they're out in the sun. Well, the buckets that probably that Greg is getting is the same kind of material we get. And right now we've got some of the buckets. My son has started with black and I have gone to the white because I mean open sun and yeah. the black will build up a heat. And if the hole is a little bit too big, it'll cause them to come out a little faster. Uh, the yeah. white seems to hold up a good four or five years. Okay. I mean, I would prefer, and the white plastic, I think, is different plastic in, with those frosting buckets you get or the other those five-gallon buckets. Because mm -hmm. I used to use those as the drinking fountains with the syrup in there. And it, you're right, those little webbings in there seem to break down in about a year. Yeah, they crumble in your hand. So right. I was just wondering if those things are going to crack and break. Because I have the same buckets you and Greg have. Yeah. So, if you've got those same buckets, uh, if you don't want to buy a whole bunch of them, set them on the sun. I mean, you have sometimes the proof is in the put and in what you yeah. see, you know. Yeah. But I'm not one that's going to try to sell you something that I won't use myself, you know. Yeah. No, I... Um, and getting back to the drones, are you, uh, that would be just shipping in a regular three pound package or I really a three don't pound box? Ship drones just by themselves. Uh -huh. if, you, if you pick them up, we could check, we could shake them for you, but drones won't do as good as regular bees shipping them. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they want to spend their time chasing the girls. And if they're all caged up, they get bored, they get stir crazy. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, that's it. Thank you. Okay. I think Greg wants to add something to that, Todd. Yeah. Hey, Todd, I'm not sure exactly what it is. You'd have to probably, if you could pull, pull up some kind of specs on the polymer, on the plastic versus when it gets extruded, I would think there's just as much uh, pigment on white as there is everything else. But what I've noticed, even with those, I've got white buckets now that I think are probably pushing uh, four years old. And I'm, I'll admit, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to my bee yard. My bee yard looks like, looks like hell right now. It is, it's a mess. And the buckets are still out everywhere and they're stacked up. There's ice all over them. Uh, a bunch of them still have old feet in it. I'll admit it. Um, but they're, they, mine are out 24 seven all year round. Um, and they're still holding up. I've got buckets that I bought last year, five gallon buckets, uh, like the, the, a regular Lowe's or a Home Depot. Some are blue, some are orange. Yeah. And just after one year, the handles are cracking off. They're splitting down the side. There's nothing worse than packing water to an animal in a five-gallon bucket with a bucket you just bought that year and the bottom falls out or it cracks through. It is so annoying. I don't know what it is about those little one-gallon buckets, um, but I, I'm pretty tough on stuff here. And they're still lasting, like I said, four years. So yeah. uh, maybe there's something with the size. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the color. But like Don said, the black ones are going to are going to absorb more of that probably UV. I would think maybe that has something to do with it. I wouldn't worry about the white ones. And for me, as cheap as they are, I mean, if I can get three years out of it, I mean, I'll I'll recycle that and use that for lots of other containers for the farm. You know, at that point. Um, on your buckets, are you uh, do you uh, sanitize them in any way, or are you just basic soap and water, and that's it? It it well, that depends on how lazy I am. So I've got a couple a couple kids now that are getting older and they're looking for more of an entrepreneurial role here on the farm. So I've got some designated bucket cleaners uh, that are going to be uh, starting their new careers um, this spring. Uh, so what that means is also you, you might have heard on the on the video that we put out, we use the, the lids that have the seal and those are fantastic. But once you take them off, they don't seal back up right. Yeah. Well, the, those ran short and all I could buy was the regular bucket lids without the rubber seal. 
I actually like those better. And I'm thinking about putting an update video out. They actually are, they steal off just as well, but you can pull those rascals right off and you can clean and touch those buckets up uh, to where the ones with the rubber seal, you don't want to, you don't want to tear that tab off because then you don't really get them on so well. So yeah. I guess the, 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 the answer that I would have for you on that is if you go with the, that quick, the regular lid, the standard bucket lid, it seals off well, but you can take that thing off and you can just rinse it out with water and you're good. But if you let it go too long and it gets that black crud, then you might need soap and water. And if you're lazy, if you admit that you're lazy like me, or maybe you're better than me about it, then great. Some of these buckets that I have with those old tear tabs, I'll, the whole lid will have to get removed and I just make a bleach water up. I lay them all out on the driveway, the big, just a big block of them. And I just rinse them all out first. And then we'll hit them with uh, a bleach water mix, let the sun get on them. And then they're beautiful, pristine. And just to your point about the bucket quality, even some of those buckets that I mean, that I'm drowning in bleach and let the sun hit until all the water evaporates still aren't degrading. So um, I'll chat all night about little silly farm stuff like buckets, but I uh, hope that helps through a little bit there. Yeah, no, it does. Thank you. You know, I was talking about sanitizing the buckets. Now, the only problem we have with the buckets, because we have massive amount of bees that's in the air. And if you don't have them in a closed area and you're filling buckets up and you start accumulating four or five bees that get in there and you can't get them out, then yeah. you have a problem. But mold or that black stuff in there, that tells me you're using sugar and water and it's not thick enough. When we had that problem, we was using sugar and water. When we went to the corn syrup, even if they set from November to January or February with a half a bucket, I have never found molding them yet. So when we switch from that sugar, the sugar is fermenting in there if you put water, especially if it's well water. It causes some kind of a fermentation, but that's for sanitizing. If they, you know, you open the lid up and you see there's a bunch of dead bees in there, then if there's just little syrup, we just dump it out. I take a five gallon bucket of water with maybe two or three tablespoons of bleach in there. And I submerge that two gallon bucket in a five gallon bucket. And then I swirl it around a little bit. And then I dump it back out in the same five gallon bucket. And I keep recycling it. It cleans the the bucket out but that's the limitation of what we do okay all right well i i don't have the black mold on mine or any dark mold yeah i have little pink spots which i think is from the hard water but i'm not 100 percent sure because what i did was at the end of uh, last year when i was done i i took them i took a hose and filled every one of them up swirled it around let them drain and dry out. Mm -hmm. But then over the winter, they've uh, they've started getting little pink spots on them. Um, so I don't know what that is. It might be the, just the minerals in the water. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking because it does that on other things around here, so. We don't have a place that we can actually do that, store the buckets. We, we run in about four or 5,000 buckets. So it's yeah. hard to have a building just designated just for that. A bucket building. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, that's all for me. Okay. Thank you. All right, over to Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Got on. There you go. I get it unmuted. Yeah. Uh, how you doing, Don? Oh, doing good. I'm gonna try something new this year. I'm gonna one of the things you're doing, you've done on the videos where you're taking the comb and cutting it and making queen cells. Just cutting the strip, one inch strips and then making the queen sales. Yep. <clears throat> is there anything I need to watch out for? <clears throat> Excuse me. If you, is there anything I need to watch out for? Just got to get in there and, and keep after them. We, if once you get up to a bunch of hives, it's, it's a lot more practical to start grafting. And if you know if you don't want to, if you don't want to graft, just make the hive queenless. Or if you're running doubles. Put a queen excluder between the two boxes. Don't even look for the queen. Well, what I was looking for was to, I make some, if I ever find a queen cell, I always pull it out and I put it in the queen castle or in a, yeah. start another hive with it. Uh, but I thought I'd try this, just see if I can make some queens and I don't want to go 
enough to do grafting yet, but uh, if I can get some started this way, it's what I was looking for. Yeah, it'll work. Probably get a half a dozen to a dozen on a frame like that. It's easy to do. So. Yeah. Come over and we'll put you in the class, uh, grafting class. Then you can do them by the hundreds. Yeah, that's I'm going to retire about a year and a half or so, and that's what my plan is to come see you. Okay. All okay. right. Thank you, Don. Okay. All right. Over to Linda. Go ahead, Linda. So I want to know if any of you that are selling Don's bees, anybody is close to Missouri. I'm in central Missouri. I know Dennis has had them from time to time, but didn't you say you weren't going to be able to sell them this year? I'm selling queens this year. Just I'm not going to be able to go down and get the packages like I had before. Okay. But, Did, uh, is anybody close to Missouri to where I wouldn't have to drive clear to Georgia? <laughs> two or places else? down to Dad's Arkansas. Look at uh, Don's Keepers. I think there's two of them right just south of you. Yeah. What's there? Where would I find them? On <laughs> Don's page. Don's <laughs> Yeah, just go to fatbeeman.com and look at Don's Keepers, and there's a map there of everyone that uh, sells Don's bees. Okay, okay, thanks. Sure. Okay, since we got Dennis on, go ahead, Dennis. You're still on mute. All right. Uh, what kind of pump do you use to pump your corn syrup? Uh, we used to use the smaller ones we got from Harbor Freight. Now we got one. It's it's a, a four inch pump, something like what the fire department uses. It'll fill a toad up in about less than five minutes. Comes out four inch stream. Well, I'm thinking about rigging up something where I can pull out of the tote, fill them buckets up in the yard, speed things up. You have a one ton truck? <laughs> no, I got a trailer right now. Well, you can do it with a trailer. I mean, I've got one on one of my blue trucks and we got one on a one ton. Just plumb it out, get you uh, that reducer that goes into the bottom of the tote and then reduce it down with a ball uh, valve and then just have a turn down and you set your bucket there. On a pickup truck, you're going to have to set a, a box sideways to where you can get down low enough and have it come out across your tailgate. No pump is required. Now, we used a 12-volt direct pump when we had uh, about 100 foot of 3H airline. We used to go up and down the rows and filling up high top feeders. There just got to be so much time dragging the hose. We went to the buckets. It's so much faster. Just uh, It'll drain out of that tote fast enough not to waste too much time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to, you know what, like you say, time's money. I'm just yeah. trying to say, all right, I'll he's, hook it up. He's got, he's got a tow it on his truck, and he'll tell you it come out pretty fast. Okay. Sometimes well, it's like, faster than you can shut it off. <laughs> well, I'll try that first before I get that investment. But uh, I'm just asking, I'm just within 30 days of being, I'm getting antsy, just trying to get everything done. <laughs> we got four more, four more days and five, or five more days, and we're setting about 3,000 cells. Now, I'm going to come down hopefully sometime this year and pick up some cells. Give me a kind of a jump. I want to see what kind of resources I came through with, get them up good and strong. So when I get back, I think uh, Greg has gotten cells from us and you, we got a pretty good hatch rate on them. Didn't you buy cells from us, Greg? Not yet, but uh, looking to maybe grabbing a, a whole uh, incubator full later on this year. Maybe first part of April when I'm down there for the first pickup. Not maybe yeah. maybe the second route too. We'll see. I can't keep up with what students come and pick up cells, but if you're coming any distance at all, say 18 hours, 20 hour drive, get one of those chicken incubators, get a little inverter, put it in your truck, uh, and let us know that you're coming ahead of time, and we can pull them off a day or a day and a half earlier, because the ones that we're pulling here they hatch within 24 to 36 hours, almost ready on time. Well, I'll call you ahead of time. I got one of these reptile incubators with a it's twelve volt. I can plug yeah. in. It, that'll it's all work. set up. Um, of course, I'll make a vacation out of it, so I may be down there two or three days early, and we'll see what happens. And 
bring I'll let you know ahead of time. We'll have a, a tent party down here. <laughs> I don't know if I can get the wife into the bee yard, but we'll we'll try to wander around there if we can. <laughs> come to the southern yard. You ain't seen the southern yard. We you come to the house, we're up in Lula. Well, that'll work. We got some friends down toward the border, so we might work it all in. So appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Over to Matt. Go ahead, Matt. All right, you hear me? Yep. I got uh only question I really got is uh what temperature do you start adding boxes onto your house? What temperature? Well, yeah. right now it's been running 27 in the 35. And uh, well, we set up a bunch of hives the other day, just get them off the ground and start setting them on stands. And it was like 29, 31 degrees. But if you're as, asking to set a box on to make honey? No, to add, to add another box on top, yes. We try not to add boxes. We try to keep them crowded, and if they get crowded, we start shaking and then make our splits off or our nukes. See, we got to shake about 300 packages in about a week and a half just to set up the nukes, get those ready for cells, so that when the cells come off, we can just drop the cell and they'll be ready to go. Okay. Oh, uh, got one more question. Okay. If I I bought a uh, drone cone this year, uh, when's the best time to put that in, or should I've done had it in? Well, I would have left it in all winter, personally. Well, I just bought it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would get it in when you're starting to feed them good or you got a good honey flow. No worse, wait till you start getting a flow and then put them in. Or a good, hunt, a good, you know, feed them good. You're going to have to wait till the weather gets up about 55, 60 degrees before they start drawing that stuff. Okay. All right. That's about only question. Okay. Okay. Next over to, go ahead, Jay. Hey, Dennis, on those feeders, <clears throat> I've got mine on a one-ton truck. I can fill up a one-gallon bucket in about four seconds. So, and that's just let it flow. That's the corn syrup? Yeah. All right, I won't worry about it. Once the temperature's up, I shouldn't have any problems. Big, biggest problem you have is if you look off for just a second, you'll overflow it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee you, I'll do that. I'll get sidetracked. <laughs> All right. Thank but you. If, yeah. If you're in the bee yard, bees will clean it up anyway. You know what we do? Well, I do up my yard here and then over here. When we're filling those buckets up, get you a 55 gallon barrel lid that's got the plugs in it and then set it under where you're filling because you're going to have a few drip drips here. And sometimes you might run that bucket over a little bit. The bees will come and they'll recycle it. And then if you're sitting there, you won't have ants coming up your leg because they'll come right to that syrup. That's a good idea. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead, Nancy. Don? Yes. Um, where did you get your cement staples at? Dave can't find them online. You can, well, we buy a lot of our stuff from Kentech. K-E-N-T-E-C or T-T-C-H. Did you get that? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, and back to Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Unmute it, Dennis. I can hear you laughing. I can't respond. <laughs> Yeah, Linda was talking about her bees like that. I'm sure some of you guys, Don's probably seen it. I had me a hive that I just loved. I was going to make a bunch of queens out of it, looked in there, and they were all dead. I shook them out, went to check my other hives, and I don't know what the proper term for it was, but they were just laying there dormant. They all crawled back into the hive. <laughs> they wasn't wet. I just a learning experience years ago. From there on, I was real cautious but they were, I don't know if you call near death or what, but they were dry. They were laying there, not a thing moving, put them out on that sun deck. They come back and went back, back in the hive. Although it did cost me my queen. <laughs> with that. I don't know what I they, called tor they call it uh, torpor, T-O-R-P-O-R. Torpor. And unfortunately I've, I've learned that the hard way too. Uh, two, about two years ago, I shook out, I don't know, 12 or 14 boxes and five frame singles that I didn't think had made it. I shook those rascals out. Uh, 
on the ground there and I put everything back and I licked my wounds and I'm kind of frugal. And so I thought, well, shoot, I just wasted an awful lot of chicken feed. <laughs> so the next day it was probably 55 degrees out or so. And I went to go out to go scoop up those bees to go give to the chickens. And there wasn't a single bee anywhere around there. They were all gone, completely disappeared, flew back. And there was, there was some, uh, some couple of new clouds of bees kind of floating around. So the moral of the story, I think for me is, especially here in Ohio, when it does get so cold is make sure you're, you're checking to see if your bees are dead when it truly is warm enough for them to get warm. And when in doubt, just take them in and put them on your wife's dining table and find out. <laughs> that, yeah, that'll help. <laughs> Somebody else will be dead at that point. I'll be living down at the southern yard. <laughs> All right. And anybody else got any more questions? We're coming up on nine o'clock. Put those hands up. Tick tock, tick tock. Just like getting married, you speak up now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Hey, Don, a lot of folks are uh, hopefully have already gotten their package orders in uh, to you, uh, you and Stephen. I think you just said Stephen was uh, pretty much sold out. For uh, love, March. I've been, yeah, or for March, yeah. Uh, a lot of folks, uh, timing is always a little bit tricky uh, on sometimes the weather is great. If you, if you go to uh, wunderground.com, you can pull up all the history and they'll actually forecast what it's going to be this year. There's sometimes where it's it's really nice. Other times it's twenties, thirties and snow. Uh, and so I know we go about it a certain way in Ohio or here where it's cold, where we can install the bees in the rain um, or uh, even in the snow. I don't know if you want to run for, I know you have, you have a lot of videos there, but if you wanted to maybe verbalize the folks who might be installing in colder climates or uh, when the weather's less than ideal, if you have any tips or tricks for them. I probably have four different videos at least on installing bees in warm weather, cold weather, and rainy weather. And it's basically the, the way you put the position of that cleaning there. And uh, it's, they're like three, four minute videos. Very easy. Uh, if it's really cold, there's a lot of people just tell you, set the cage down in there and uh, they'll climb out. But if you don't get the queen out and put the queen between the frames and dump those bees out physically, sometimes the pheromones of the queen in that cage, they'll stay in the package and don't go by the queen. So I mentioned all that in those videos. Just go to thefatbeeman.com or uh, the Fat Bee Man channel on YouTube. And you can pull up all of them. There's about 400 videos and installing packages. I know I've done at least three or four of them. And they're easy to follow. And then if you have a problem or you think you're going to have the chat, you can get on the chat. We can we can chat about it. Or you can email me. I Get me on Facebook. I usually check that three or four times a day. That's uh, Dixie, uh, DixieBeesupply.com, right? Yeah, Dixie Bee Supply, that's my web page. And then on Facebook, page. Don Kuchenmeister. We got the Fat Bee Man group on Facebook. Be Make sure to, look if you look at the videos, be sure to like them and subscribe to the channel. And when we put new ones out, you'll get a, a notice right away on them. And then if you are looking to pick up packages locally uh, in the Georgia area, you can go to the Fat Bee Man's uh, page on Facebook. And it's Stephen Kuchenmeister, Don's son, just had to put a post up. Uh, with pricing and all that, you can reach right out to them and uh, talk to them about picking packages up locally uh, there in Crawfordville. Mm -hmm. We'll have pickups in Lula too. Okay, good. All right. So we got one question left and then we're done. Go ahead, Jay. Hey, Don, just a quick one. Uh, I talked to Julie down in down Houston about getting some of your queens mm -hmm. and uh, she wasn't going to set or take orders from them until they actually get there. Are you shipping direct? Yo, yeah, from get a hold of Steven, and if you need him direct, um, I don't know when his first orders is going out. Well, first thing we got to do is we got to fill the boxes up and get the cells. So our first cell is going in three or four days. So okay. if they're going in three or four days, that means they won't be out for two weeks yet. Okay. Get a hold of him and get on the uh, whenever you think you want them, so he can set you up a time on that uh, for shipping. But uh, okay, 
ask him if he's going to overnight them or, you know, regular mail. I think Julie gets hers overnight. She pays for them overnight and they get the next day. Yeah, I'd want them overnight if I could. Yeah. You pay a little okay. bit more, but they're in really good condition. Yeah. Okay. And Pat, you have something to add? Unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the thing about uh, mailing, just wanted to remind everybody, if you're expecting honeybees in the mail, call your post office and tell them that you're willing to come whenever they arrive and to not allow them to get sprayed or exposed to the weather. Uh, we had 300 nukes sitting on the loading dock and they were sanitizing at the height of COVID and killed all of the bees. So. Not us, one of the local beekeepers brought in bees. So uh, just warn the post office they're coming. That's all. Right. all. Good info. All right, then that'll do it for tonight. Thank you, Don. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks. And feel free to stick around for the after chat if you'd like. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for hosting. <laughs> <laughs>